What's up guys, it's Josh from Keep It Techy, and today I wanted to do a quick video showing you guys the back command. Now first off, I wanna talk about the cat command, which is the command that the back command is cloned from. And I did a video a while back on the cat command and it basically stands for concatenate. It basically prints out uh, whatever file that you direct it to onto the screen as standard output. Well, the back command is a little bit better. It's actually written in the Rust programming language and the back command comes with syntax highlighting uh, which is good for people that that write programs using different program languages so i just wanted to do a quick video just showing you guys the back command it's not going to take too long i'm just go through and show you guys how to actually use it i mean if you know how to use the back command i mean the cat command then you'll understand how to use the back command because it's pretty much the same command it's just a way to highlight programming languages when you're outputting the file data to the screen within the terminal so let's get started okay cool so today i'll be doing a demonstration in manjaro linux which is an orch based distribution uh so let's go down and get started with installing the bat command because it doesn't come by default like cat so let's open up a terminal right fast and get to installing it and just so you know it's in pretty much all the repositories and from what I've read in some of the distributions, the name of the command is bat cat instead of just bat like it is in Orch. Uh, some of them is required to, the name is required to be bat cat because there is another command out there called bat that it conflicts with. So if it's not in, if that other bat program is not within the repository, then on that distribution, the name is bat. So let's go down and install it right fast. And the command to install it, like I said, it's in all the repositories, especially in Arch, uh, it's just sudo pacman, capital S, and then bat, and let's press enter. And go on in type in our password and install it and i totally forgot to tell you guys but you want to make sure you update the system i'm sure this system is updated because as soon as i open it up i updated it before continuing on with the video but that's one of the first things you want to do so now that we have bat install let's go on and go to the man page for bat so if we type man and bat and press enter it'll bring up the man page for it and as you can see uh, the name of it is Bat. It's a cat clone with syntax highlighting and Git integration. And here's the usage. So you got Bat, and then they have a, a lot of options. And then the actual file that you want to run through the Bat command. And just to read a little bit about the description, it says uh, Bat prints the syntax highlighted content of a collection of files to the terminal. If no file is specified or when a file is dash it reads for from standard output and then also it says down here bat supports a large number of programming and markup languages it also communicates with git to show modifications with respect to the git index bat automatically pipes its output through a range through a pager by default less so that's one cool thing about bat that i wanted i was going to talk about but uh, it runs everything through less by default. I don't know if you remember my video I did on the cat command uh, by piping things in the less that'll allow it you to page down, up and down, whatever document, depending on how long it is, the file is, uh, then you would pipe it through less. That way it doesn't, you know, just print it all out and then you have to scroll all the way back up to get to the top of the document if you're searching for something. And if we go right here, it says when the output of bat goes to a non-interactive terminal, i.e. when the output is piped into another program or into a file, bat will act as a drop-in replacement for cat and file back to printing the plain file text. So you can actually pipe it into less as well using bat and it will do the exact, exact same thing as cat. And just to go down a little bit, uh, there are a couple of options down here. I'm not going to go through them all. I'm just show you a few, I'm not even show you that many. I'm going to just uh, 
show you how to actually use it against a file. So let me go down and quit this right fast by pressing Q. And then I already have a file generated. It's basically a, a HTML file. So let me go down and, uh, and run bat against that file. So you guys can see a depiction of how it actually works. So if we go bat, and then I have, uh, I can't remember if it's test, or it might be HTML, HTML test.txt. So if we press enter on that. As you can see, it goes into less. And as you can see, it has the numbers on the side, which is pretty cool. So that's one way of actually running a command. Uh, like I said, it pipes into less. Uh, that way you can go through the file, you know, page up, page down, or just kind of scroll down uh, and then press Q to quit. And that'll quit out the file. Okay, so let me go down and show you guys how to actually highlight the text. Because as you can see, when we ran it normally, it just piped it into less and it added the numbers on the side where there there's also a way to specify the language that the text file is actually in. And to be honest, the reason it didn't show um, the format is because the name of the file is wrong. So it, since this is an HTML file, it should have .html. And so since it was just a text file, that's why it didn't highlight anything. It didn't know what to highlight. But you can go in and specify it. And that's what I want to show you guys now. So if you go bat uh, dash L, or actually let's list out the uh, languages. So if we go list dash languages and press enter, that'll list out all the different languages that are in, that can be used with it. So uh, like you have HTML, uh, and let me, I was just trying to go back up to the top, but you got batch files, uh, you know, CSVs, uh, C, C sharp, C plus plus, uh, get, you know, comments. They got go in here as well. Uh, HTML, like I said, Java, JSON. Um, also is another thing, um, markdown, you know what I'm saying? I want to, you know, kind of show you guys that as well as password, you know, you got password list. Uh, even R is in here and as well as SQL. I haven't got to it yet, but SQL, but Ruby, um, as you can see, uh, SQL, SSH, you know, all that good stuff. So since this is an HTML file, let's go on and, um, and, and run the back command against that file, but, um, specifying the language. So if we type dash L, which is, that's the option that you want to use in order to specify the language of the actual file. So space, and then we want to type HTML. And then the file name. So this is what it was HTML test.txt. And if we press enter there, as you can see, it highlights it. And so it looks kind of like when you're actually writing the code, which is a good thing. I mean, like I said, this is a good way of actually uh, reviewing your files by just using a bat command, which is, like I said, similar to the cat command. And let me go down and quit right fast. And just so you know, I wanted to show you this right fast. So if we change that file name, the HTML test.txt, uh, let's go down and change it. So let's use the move command, uh, HTML test, and we want to put it in that same directory. So I always do the period forward slash, and that'll let me let it know to put it in the same directory. And actually, let's just add it to the end of the file. So dot HTML and press enter. And if we list out this directory, you'll see that I changed the, the file name to include the HTML format. So if we type the back command on this file now, it'll automatically know that it's an HTML file by the file name. So if we type HTML test.txt.html uh, and press enter, you'll see that it highlights it as an HTML file. It automatically knows that it's HTML and it'll highlight the format. Whenever it's in that text format, it doesn't know what it is. So you have to specify it. That's my whole reason for showing you guys that. Uh, so if you have like a SQL file or, you know, a SQL script, like a, a query or something like that, it'll know that it's a query file uh, because you'll have SQL at the end of it or any other formats. That's why I wanted to show you guys that. But 
I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please like, share, and subscribe to the channel. Like I said, I wanted to make this video kind of quick and simple because most people know how to use the cat command. It's very simple to use. And so if you have a base understanding of how to use the cat command, then the bat command is a great command for you to try, try out and see if it can help you with your coding files or whatever. And I apologize, it's been about a week since I uploaded a video. It's been real busy with, with my job and I haven't had time to produce videos as I normally would. And also I wanna apologize, I was supposed to do a live stream today, but something actually came up with my guests and he wasn't able to make it. So I'll, can, I'll do another live stream uh, next week. I have somebody else scheduled, but like I stated, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Please check out this command. You know what I'm saying? If you're just getting into Linux, this might help you, especially when you're looking at different programming files. So, hope you guys have a good day. Keep it techie.